Welcome to Blisters, I'm Lost the Saxon. There are a few topics that I literally for years have been meaning to talk about and I never find the time. So before the year is up, this is going to be a little rant about the top three things that really tick me off in movies, TV shows and computer games. Without any specific order in the amount how much they tick me off, number one, children. Or more to the point, the lack of children in films, movies, TV shows and computer games. You might see, even if it's a fantasy word, some community of people, it's a bunch of grown-ups and they have no children. Now I can understand if a small show has a limited budget that they don't really have the money to have a few children standing around to make it look right. But even in a very recent Disney animated Star Wars clip where we see the early days of Ahsoka Tano, there's this village she lives in. It's got about 30 or so adults. There is one woman who is obviously much older, a grandmother. So Disney does acknowledge there are different generations, but it's basically one grandmother 30, 20 to 30 whatever, grown up people around the ages, I don't know, 20 to 40, and one child. This is an animated thing. They could have easily thrown in a whole lot of children and make it look realistic. Now I understand this is a fantasy word, a totally fictional story about a fictional character from a type of humanoid that doesn't exist. But still, it destroys the immersion if I see a village and there are these 20, 30 year olds and one child. The computer game Oblivion, you have the beggars referencing children, but there's not a single child. Step onto Skyrim and yes, we do actually have some children. I understand for game mechanics, it is difficult to have newborns, two year olds, six year olds, 15 year olds, 12 year olds. We only have a bunch of 10 year olds and Loki is supposed to be a teenager. There's a second one too. And I think if you would count, you'd probably find for every child that we have in Skyrim, you've got four or five adults. So the proportions are out of proportion where we do have it. Number two, walls. Here, not the lack of them, the quality. Now, in big budget movies, this is normally not a problem, but occasionally it's there. And in video games where they can create things to look like however they want them to look like, is also normally not a problem. A lot of TV shows, and I understand it, low budget, the walls, especially fortified walls, fences, are crap. There are so many things that even shows that cost supposedly millions of US dollars like Vikings, you have fortifications where I take one look at it and I see, yeah, I can knock that over. Yet these acting soldiers are going, oh, oh, there's a barrier, I cannot pass, oh. Very recently, the episode of Willow, where he gets imprisoned, he's in this cell, which is basically some rocks and there is a door. That's not a wall, I know, but it falls in the same category. And I'm looking at that thing and saying, he's not imprisoned. I'm not bashing Warwick David, but he's a small guy, he's elderly, he could push that open, no problem. It's feeble sticks. And once again, it destroys the immersion when I see something pathetic like that. Same sort of thing, slightly different though, is what's really dreadful when people have this concept that, oh well medieval people weren't good at building things, weren't they? So they have walls to houses or the front door made of planks that are very irregular, so you've got huge gaps between them. Apparently the medieval people were good enough to make flat planks, but they couldn't make parallel sides to those planks really gets me annoyed. Third, and as I said, not least because there is no ranking here, supplies, or once again, the lack of supplies. Any marching army 
you will never see any sort of wagons accompanying them with their supplies or the soldiers having huge backpacks with their food and more important drink. Now I say you see, you never see that. Obviously there's the exception, if it's going to be some plot point later on, the enemy captures our food or destroys the wagons, then you have them. Apart from that, you have whole hordes marching from Isengard to Helm's Deep with no supplies whatsoever. The Unsullied march out, not a single gram of food with them. In the books this is partly explained by them being on drugs the whole time. Not so in the films. Now here once again you could argue, oh well for cost's sake, but seriously, is it that difficult if you've got enough money for thousands of people to pretend they're soldiers to put up just a few wagons that can circle round so it looks like there's a lot of them. A bit annoying and I'd like to just point out here a lot of people are always concerned about oh we haven't got enough to eat we're going to starve. Water is much more important. You might think what is the most important piece of equipment a soldier carries? It's not actually his weapon. It is whatever he carries is water, it be it a flask, a canteen, bottle, whatever you want to call it. Water is extremely important to any soldier and a marching army because you can't necessarily always find it, it can be poisoned, you've got to have supply wagons or something like that carrying this stuff and we never see them unless of course as said they become a plot point because they were destroyed or captured. So those are the three things that really tick me off in films, movies, series and computer games. There are other things, so for instance it's become very normal that someone falls to a great height and their fall is broken by water. Yes, you know, if you fall down 200 metres nothing's going to happen to you because you fell into water, it broke your fall. Anyone who's ever jumped into water from a reasonable height, should we say 5 metres, might know that it probably won't be that easy to not go unhurt if you jump from 200 metres or fall out of the sky, whatever it is. Even worse is this idea that has come in that also branches from trees can break your fall. Yes, they do. But fact is, if you fall from a, um, a significant height onto a branch, you're going to be bruised at least. Even worse, in Disney's Tangled, there's this horse that for some reason becomes a bloodhound, and I think it jumps off a castle's parapets onto a roof, and then from that roof onto the street. Horses break their legs with much smaller jumps than that. But we're not going to go into that. Lack of spears is also something I find very sad. As said, there are some like the Ansala that do have it, but on the whole, we've got a lack of spears and too many swords in proportion. And what makes it worse is that those swords are used by absolute amateurs. I really can't stand these stupid pushing contests that they have. I understand it so that the actors have dialogues. You know what I'm talking about? Two swords clash and there's a push. You killed my father, no, you killed my brother, you know, and they talk. This is because these guys do not understand how to use swords. Otherwise, you push, you die. But I'm not going into that. And of course there is the spinning. Oh, we're not going to talk about that whatsoever. While we're on the topic of weapons, it is very sad that slings are utterly underrepresented or non-existent actually in this, whereas in the computer game Ultima Underworld you can use slings there. Catapults, utterly misunderstood. Actually you can say that for all siege weapons that the filmmakers don't really understand how these things really work. And the very last thing why we're on weapons, bows and arrows. I am an archer, but arrows are not one-shot kill things. Even if you hit, should we say, a deer in the heart, you don't go for the head. That is covered in bone. You go for the heart. It is going to take that, uh, that deer a few seconds to literally drop dead. Not if you're some character in a movie and you get shot by the hero. You drop dead straight away. 
And most importantly, bows do not creak! Yes, it's all right. So, for those of you that can't count, those were the three things that really tick me off in movies, TV series, and computer games. I hope you're going to have a great start in the next new year. See you then.